Now we're ready to start our drawing. We want to make sure that everything we draw is on the center line layer. So at the top of the screen, select the center line layer to make it active and make it your current layer. So if we wanted to just draw a line, we could select our line tool and make an orthographic line, an orthogonal line, which means it's perfectly horizontal or vertical. To do this, turn on your ortho mode at the bottom of your screen. We can type in an exact dimension for this, simply by dragging our cursor in the direction we would like the line to go, and typing in 5 feet, hitting enter, and then hit enter again. And we just made a 5 foot line. There are actually multiple types of lines in AutoCAD, so let's erase this line by typing E for erase and selecting the line, or selecting the line and hitting the delete key. We'd like to get into the practice of primarily using polylines. Polylines are lines that allow you to have multiple segments that are all connected in one connected line. There are also a number of options for polylines that regular lines don't have, so in general it's best to default to polylines. From your measured drawings that you made out in the field, you probably have a sense of the street width and sidewalk width for your site. I'll start with a polyline and make it the length of my block. So let's say the block was 150 feet long. Click enter, and it should go off the screen. You have a couple of ways of zooming out, but for this we're going to want to zoom to the extents of the line. To do that, type a zoom into your command line, and click E, or type E, to zoom to extents. That was Z enter, E enter, and we can see the entire length of the line. I'd like to offset from this to create the curbs and the sidewalk. To do this, we're going to use the offset command. Type O for offset, and select the curb. Now, in your measurements, the street is probably 20 feet from the center line. Click enter, and we're going to go ahead and do both sides of the street. When you use these commands, keep an eye on the command bar. When you type offset, it will ask you to select the distance, 20 feet, select the object to offset, the center line, and then select which side you would like to offset that line to. The command line will prompt you for how to use the commands. Let's zoom in to create the curb. Type offset, select your measurement of 6 inches for the curb, select the object, and click. We're going to change these two lines to the curb layer. At the top of your screen, in the drop-down window, click on the yellow curb layer to change their layer. We'll do the same thing to get the back of the sidewalk. So type offset, select the curb, and this is probably six feet from the back of the curb. If you measured an intersection, you might end up with a perpendicular street. Let's create a line that's perpendicular to the original center line. Create a new polyline from the center line, and let's say 75 feet for that line. Let's say these lines are narrower at 15 feet, so we'll offset those. 15 feet, click, click. Let's zoom in to create the curb. Again, offset 6 inches and offset 6 feet for the sidewalk. And we're going to select those objects and change their layer to the curb layer. It's very uncommon for an intersection to have a very sharp corner like this. So what I'd like to do is to make a 15 foot radius curve on this corner. To do that, we're going to use the fillet command. Type fillet, select your radius in the command line, click radius, or type the letter R, enter 15 feet, click on the outermost curb, and then the outermost curb to create your new 15 foot radius curve. Watch what happens when we try to do the same thing for the inner curve on the sidewalk. This curve is not accurate. To fix this, we're going to delete the object entirely and then offset our outer curb six inches, and now that's the correct curvature. 
It's more common to see the corner of a building lot have a perfectly right angle corner. To fix this overlapping line, we're going to use the fillet command again, but change our radius from 15 feet to a radius of zero. And this will give you a sharp corner on the edge of this lot. This distance is problematic. You may want to check your measurements. In some cities, they deal with this by making an angle cut into the building. To do that, we're going to use a command in AutoCAD called chamfer. Click on angle. Let's type 6 feet and an angle of 45. And what this will do is create an angled cut into our building, which should resolve that condition. Another thing you might want to start doing is identifying the building parcels along the street. Perhaps you know that from this edge, it's over 20 feet to the next building. I'm going to use a couple of commands to do this. I could offset this curb by the distance we need, but because this is a joined polyline, it would not offset correctly. In order to get it to offset correctly, we're going to explode this polyline into three individual lines. It is no longer a joined line segment, and we can now offset the individual lines for the distances of the building. So we said this distance was 20 feet. Let's say the next distance is 40 feet for the next building lot, and finally 20 feet for the final building lot. Now we need to connect these three lines to the curb. To do that, there are a couple different commands we can use. First, with nothing activated, select the object and hover over this blue square. This will give you a drop-down menu, and in that menu, select the stretch command. You can drag the object down to connect with the curb if you have your perpendicular object snap turned on. To turn on your perpendicular object snap, click on the object snap menu and activate perpendicular. You should now see a green perpendicular symbol which will tell you that the object is connecting with the sidewalk. Another command we could use is the extend command. Type extend, select the object you'd like to extend to, in this case the edge of the curb, enter, and then click on the object you'd like to extend. One last way we can connect the lines is with the stretch command. Type stretch, and drag your mouse cursor up and to the left. You don't have to hold it down, just tap and drag to the top left. This green window is a selection box which will select any object touched by the window. Now that you have this window selected, hit enter, click the end of the line, and drag it down to be perpendicular with the line. We used grip stretch, extend, and the regular stretch command to do this. Let's say that you have a line that's too long. It goes past where you want it to. We want to trim this line down with the edge of the building. In order to do that, we're going to use the trim command. Type trim, select all the objects involved, enter, and then select the objects you'd like to get rid of or trim. And this will cut the line down to the correct size. Let's create a new layer to organize these lines we've just created. Open your Layer Properties Manager, create a new layer, and let's name this layer A-Buildings, and change the layer color to blue. And let's make sure to change the line type to Continuous. Close the manager, and select all the lines you'd like to include. In CAD, you don't have to hold down Shift to add additional lines to your selection. With all the layers selected, in your drop-down menu above, select the A Buildings layer, and this will change those lines to that layer. Let's create one more layer. Name this new layer C-Infrastructure. change the layer color to red, and make sure the line type is continuous. We'll use this new layer for manholes and utility boxes you may have on your site. You might end up with something like a circle for a circular manhole. The command for circle in AutoCAD is circle. Zoom in, and let's specify this as a one foot radius circle select the object, and make sure it's on the infrastructure layer from above.
We're going to use the move command to move the manhole into the street, select the object, enter, drag it from the center, and into the street. You might also come across utility boxes on your site. For those, we're going to use the rectangle command, specify a corner point, let's say one foot, press tab, and 1.5 feet for your dimension. I can press M for move and move the box into the correct position. We're going to make one more layer before we go. Go to your layer properties, create a new layer, name this layer C-curb-joints, and for the color, select gray 252 from the menu. Click OK. In your drop-down menu above, make that layer active. We're going to use this layer to make our curb lines on the sidewalk. To make our first curb line, create a polyline, PL, specify the start and end points, perpendicular, O snap is on. We're going to use the array command to create a grid of copies of this object. Type array. In the drop-down menu, select rectangular. In the command line, type S for spacing, and let's set the spacing for 10 feet. Now, at the top of our screen, we can control how many columns and rows are in this grid. For our rows, let's set 1, and for our columns, let's try 15. Hit Enter, and now we have our joints in the sidewalk every 10 feet. I hope this is enough to help you get started on your first assignment. You may also want to play with the copy command, the scale command, and the mirror command. Let's save the document and move on to the next video.